This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined once again by light heavyweight contender Craig Spider Richards. Craig, how are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm good as always. How are you? I'm very good. Your, your name's been on a lot of boxing fans' lips over the past week or so. Um, you showed yeah. a willingness, certainly on social media and I'm sure behind the scenes, to challenge Joe Smith Jr. at short notice for the WBO light heavyweight title this weekend. Just tell us kind of the stuff we didn't see. How close was it to, to actually taking place? Well, to be fair, it's like we was reaching out, we was reaching out, we was reaching out. We wasn't getting really much of a response, you know. We know they were looking through, like, we knew there was obviously, the show was still going on. The uh, Callum Johnson pulled out um, and we looked and we realised not much people were volunteering to jump in. So, obviously, I put it out on social media, I asked my team to try and reach out. And we just thought, you know, of course, they're going to have to, we are kind of, I was 90% they was going to probably take the fight because there isn't much other options. But mm. the next day as I was waiting to hear back, I just saw a post and it picked a guy called Gerard um, something. So I was a bit disappointed, but it's just how the game goes. You know, I just tried to jump on an opportunity which didn't come off. So you must have been in pretty good shape. Were you preparing for a fight or were you just always near your fighting weight anyway? I'm, I never go too far with my fight weight. Obviously, I don't drink. I don't really eat bad out of camp anyway. And if I'm not in camp, then I'm still probably training once a day anyway. So as I've just come back from the States. I've trained every day in the States. I was sparring out there. I've come back. I've hit the ground running. Like, I haven't got a fight date yet. Today, I've just sparred eight, four-minute rounds with John Ryder and Felix Kasha. Always just training and, like, staying in shape without even a date. So did you hear anything back from his team? Any feedback at all or, or why no. they chose Jeff, Jeff Rod? Well, they, they, they first put a message out saying, oh, they were strapped with options and no one wanted to jump at the opportunity. So they picked him. But everyone clearly saw I was more than willing and I was putting it out in social media. Not, I was also putting it out on social media. I was making it very public that as soon as the announcement was made that I was willing to go. So I don't think that's very true of what I heard back from the team. But because um, everyone could clearly see I was an option and I was ready to, to fight. I've made it very clear. And tell us your mindset, because you, you were in camp, but well, you were in training, but you weren't in camp. He was preparing for a fight. Did you think Joe Smith Jr., beatable champion, style-wise it works, or was it just any champion would have had that issue and you still would have volunteered? You know, stylistically, I feel Joe, Joe Smith's good for me. Um, I feel like any of the champions, really, I would, I, I'm always one of them guys who thrive at an opportunity. I think, like, Batervia being the toughest champion, I'd obviously probably want a little bit longer than a week's notice with Batervia. He's quite a dangerous big puncher <laughs> and he can box as well. So you don't want to just want a week's notice with a guy like Batervia. You'd probably need a few weeks in a camp to prepare for him. Um, but, yeah, it was just an opportunity what I saw. And I know there's a long queue for everyone waiting at the moment for these champions. And I know I'm good enough to get that title. So I just thought, you know what, this is my time. There's an opportunity there. Grab it and grab that title. And, run off with it so that's what my mindset was and then you begun looking into like travel options and how to get out there and a potential like uh, isolation or whatever you have to do when you get there that kind of thing yeah i had to do a pcr uh 25 or well, 24 hours or uh two days we're basically doing two days of traveling out there which was fine um or do a what's the uh, um the other test is called um can't remember. It was a little bit cheaper than the PCR, but you could do that to travel out there as well. So I thought, all right, do that. And I just needed to, to get out there and I could have sorted out what else I need to sort out out there. So that's why I said, look, I'm ready to go now. My bags are packed because then all I have to do is run out quickly, go get that test, jump on the plane and sort whatever I need to sort out over on that side, any sort of medical things or checks I needed. I would have done that in the States and got myself ready. You're quite a positive person generally, but saying it was kind of 90% there in your mind and then finding out they'd gone with someone else, you must have been pretty disappointed. Yeah, I was a bit disappointed, but I always knew there's always an option that because obviously it's not like an agreement and stuff. So always there's an option they could go a different route. But I just, I looked at the options. I didn't think there was really no other options because even if you look at social media afterwards, at the time, there wasn't anyone else volunteering. <laughs> so I thought, of course, there's only one name in the hat. So... You know, had you heard of Stephen Jeffrard before he took the fight? Never. No, I, I first had to research him and come off of Stephen Gerrard. I was like, this, ain't <laughs> this can't be him. And then I had to Google him again. I've never heard of him in my life. Fair enough. So, what does the future now hold for you? You said you haven't got a fight date yet, but has, has Eddie and Matrim given you any indication of when you might be out? They've got a lot of shows coming up. 
Yeah, it was looking towards the end of March, April anyway. So it's probably possibly like looking towards uh, early April now. So um, I'll still be preparing towards April now. And um, we're obviously going for a list of names and seeing who's um, able to be ready for that date. Because at this stage of my career, I, as I'm saying, I'm not, I don't, I'm not a prospect now. I've proven I'm a, a worthy world, world contender. So I need the big fights, the big names. I want to do the big camps and I want to make sure they're all worth it at this stage and keep progressing in my career. You proved yourself last year pushing Dimitri Bivol close for the WBA belt. Well, I think even more so when you returned in October and dealt with a fellow contender in the way someone of your stature should. You know, he'd only lost yeah. split decisions in the past and you got him out of there in good fashion. Yeah, he's only lost two on split. He's had 24 fights. He's more experienced than me and only lost two on split. Never been hurt, never been dropped, never been wobbled. Very aggressive. He'd been there with big punches. Guys, 15 and no 12 KOs and walked him down and got a draw. So we know that he was very tough. And he was tough. I caught him some good shots. He took him at first, but I knew it was only a matter of time. There's only so much the human body could take. And I was willing to cause a statement. I went to Charles world class. And I thought, the only way to show I'm world class to separate myself from the rest of these guys is to get a guy out there at that level. Because he was meant to fight the week before me. He was um, originally scheduled for the 23rd of October on a... Um, world title eliminator so we could see that his aspirations was there he knew what he was going in there for for him to pull off that fight to fight me he knew that he knew this is the opportunity and he was looking to grab it with two hands and I had my own aspirations and I had to make sure that I, I continued with mine and got the job done Is it important now that if the next fight or two fights aren't world title shots that they are relatively big names or, or that there's something at stake because you don't want to go back in levels with the motivation you've got and, and where you're aiming to be Exactly, you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly what it is. There's got to be some incentive. If it's not world title, there's got to be some incentive. Good names or something different in my career. Like, say, for instance, they called me up for a good name in the USA. I would, I would like to do something like that. Anything what's different in my career was going to build me. Either like that sort of fight, if I went like and beat a big world known um, name, will elevate my um, elevate my profile and put my name in the hat even more for these world champions to wanna. Um, you know, pr like prove their champions to defend their belts against me. Maybe someone along the lines of a Marcus Brown or, or even a Kovalev, who obviously a former champion. And that, you know, you look at John Ryder, who you spend a lot of time with, he's got Danny Jacobs coming over. That, that sort of fight, that must be the sort of thing that you like. Bang, it's something like that. Exactly what John's got is something what I would like. You know, like say like Kovalev is a very big name. That would be good. You know, he's a big name. He's been champion for many years and everyone knows him because he's got a massive profile. When people used to think about the light heavyweight division, uh, Sergei Kovalev used to be the first one on the end of your tongue. So someone with a statue and profile like that, for me, I would love to get in there and mix it with them sort of guys. And of the other kind of British light heavyweights, I should ask this question. I know you're not interested in facing them unless there's a world title on the line. Who do you make as the best of the bunch apart from yourself? Apart from myself, I'm not sure. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of weird because everyone's got a different style in the light heavyweight division. So it's kind of like he might be good against him. He might be good against him. Um, so it's, it's stylistically, I can't really I can't really call it. That's fair enough. I'll, I'll, I'll let you sit on the fence on that one. We, we know you think... Outside of, achieve, outside of achievements, um, outside myself, well, obviously just came up in weight, but Callum Smith is obviously the guy who's done the most, um, achieved most, obviously, at super middleweight. So he hasn't obviously shown anything at light heavyweight yet, but he showed what he can do at super middleweight. And now he came up and he had a good win on his first fight up. So we'll, over time, we'll see how he kind of pans out in the division as well. Is that a fight you might fancy? You've obviously got the same promoter. Would you like to give him a real welcome to the division? <laughs> do you know what? It's not, it's not someone I thought of like, oh, I want Callum Smith. No, it's, just, it's one of them ones that anyone with a world title um, or I could fight for a world title, it doesn't matter who it is, I would fight them. Good stuff. Really, really appreciate your time. Let's do this again when you've got a, a fight date nailed on. Um, but yeah, hopefully on, onwards and upwards. Thank you, man. Good. Thank you for your time as well.